As you are all aware, we've been in a series called The Ministry of Jesus. Maybe you're not all aware. We're in a series. <laughs> Our messages the last number of weeks have been focusing on the ministry of Jesus and looking not just at the stories in the Gospels, but also at the stories of our lives. We're looking at what did Jesus teach? What were his miracles like? What are his parables like? What did he do? How did he interact with people? And we've had different people sharing parts of their story with us so that we can recognize it's not just in the past that Jesus ministered to people, it's in the present as well. And he promises it into the future too. So we started off the series with uh, Tony sharing his story, and then I've shared, um, I'm thinking two Sundays as well, and now I've asked Beatriz to share a bit of her story. Again, when somebody is sharing their testimony, it's not to shine a light on that person, but on God. How did God show up? How is God showing up? And how do we receive that from him, that encouragement, those lessons learned. Um, so as Beatrice shares, um, it's a very personal story, but it's God's story through Beatrice, not just Beatrice's story. So I'll ask Beatrice to come up. And I'd like to have a prayer with her before she shares. Father God, thank you that you show up in our lives that you're not a figment of our imagination, that you're not some far off removed God that we have to climb up mountains to find, but that you come very near to us and you are present in our daily circumstances. You are present in the seasons of our lives and your desire is always to bring us hope and a sense of future. Lord, as Beatrice shares, help us to hear you speaking through her life. Thank you for her willingness to give testimony May you be honored and glorified, and may Beatrice know that she is safe in your arms as she shares. I pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. I don't know where you need that. Feel free to adjust. I think it's perfect. <laughs> okay, the internet thing make me more nervous now. <laughs> <laughs> when I was asked to give this testimony, I, I thought I have to say yes, because God wants me to tell you about his wonders in my life. I would like to start by telling you that I grew up in a Catholic home, so since I was very little, I was taught to love God, to be good, to go to church, to pray. And when I was in high school in, in the university, I kept going to, to church and doing all that. I also learned from my mother that when a door, a door shuts, it's because God has a better plan for us in our lives. So I learned that God loves me and that he wants the best for me. When I was in my 20s, I met Jeff, who, and we fell in love. He was an Anglican, divorced, and gradually we started going to other Christian churches, not just Catholic. And we had Bible studies, and I simply adored having those meetings because I found that it was much easier to understand them through other eyes. God speaks different to each of us, and it's better to, ch to share. That's what I thought. Uh, we had three boys, Danny, David, and Tommy, with three years between each of them. After Bill, our, uh, when we came to Uruguay, we started going to the Anglican Church. No, I told you that? <laughs> After Bill, our bishop and friend, went to Peru, I started having a Bible study in my home with the help of a friend missionary who was the mother of my children's friends. And after a few years of having her as a leader, we met Lisa because she came to the house and she became the leader of our group. Shortly after, after, after this happened, something horrible happened in my life that was too strong for me alone. So I knew that God was preparing everything to support me. Uh, my beloved eldest son, Danny, who in that time was 17 years old, became addicted to alcohol and drugs. 
we had a very loving relationship and very close. We had a lot of conversations, so it was very difficult for me to understand what was going on. But, of course, he had been having problems not going to school and ha having trouble with keeping everything up, so when we discovered that this was due to his addiction, it was horrible, I was in shock. It was so, I don't know how to, to say useful is such a short word, but it was so useful to have Lisa in my life at that time. She, my friend and leader, became my angel and my guide through this difficult time. I really trusted her because her behavior was what she speaks what he had in her good heart. I saw Jesus in her. This was a time of full, fully scary moments. And whenever we were going through those moments, she prayed for me and gave me a verse of the Bible. I really, I discovered that that was what I really needed. And she said that they were promises from God. I remember thinking, promises, okay. I love Liz and I will trust her because I thought there were beautiful stories, praises, or whatever else, but promises. I learned that it was true. He gave me the first verse that I put in my heart, which was Isaiah 41.10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. In this time when life has become a roller coaster, I really met God. What an amazing discovery. I realized that I have, I have always believed in God and prayed, but I never saw who God really was. I knew he was mighty and that he loved me. So what was I missing? I discovered that I didn't know from the bottom of my heart that he didn't really need my help. He was mighty. He was omnipresent. He was in me. He was everywhere. He wasn't distracted with other more important things in the world. He was there for me. And that was amazing. He, I also came to realize that human flaws has nothing to do with God. He was my father, but a perfect father. In other words, I had humanized God to put him in my brain and understand him. What a joy and a relief to understand that I didn't have to depend on my own resources in my own brain. I just had to ask the Holy Spirit to guide me. So I learned that praying is a dialogue and I started to listen to God he started to reveal himself to my heart, and I started to know him a little more each day so I could trust him and lean on him. When we walk without realizing what, how huge God is, it's like walking in the darkness with a candle. And that's what I did. It was then when I started really believing God. It was then when many blessings started to flow into my life, such as being able to forgive myself for failing my, my son. I was really burdened with that, and God took that burden out. I also learned what it is to have peace beyond circumstances and beyond understanding. After four years of struggle, we came to the moment in which my boy was dying. After having been several times before facing moments where he could have died, he was finally in intensive care, waiting to die. I felt like God has abandoned me, and I felt despair when the doctor told us that he was really dying. What a confusion. Lisa was with us in that moment. So I asked her, Lisa, where is God? What is going on? What will happen to my Danny? Where will he go? What will happen to my other boy's faith? 
David was 17 and Tommy was 14 at the time. And Tommy kept saying to me, don't worry, mommy. Danny will come walking out of the hospital as he did before because God has huge plans for him. So what would I tell them? What would I tell all the people that were praying all around the world? Lisa was very wise not to invent an answer. She just said, I don't know my friend, but ask God. So in that terrible moment, I just kept trusting God. The next day, in the afternoon, when my husband and I went to the room to see our son, who was in a coma, we had the purpose of controlling ourselves to give him peace and to help him to, sorry, <laughs> and to help him to go to paradise. Something in my heart, of course, the Holy Spirit was guiding me. So while saying hello to him, I wished, I, I told him, Danny, I wish you could tell us somehow that you are listening to us. And in that moment, his eyes were full of tears. Remember, he was in a coma, but he, he was crying. Gracias. So motivated with that sign, we started to speak a lot to him. We were talking and talking and talking beautiful and deep things and telling him to go in peace, that we forgave him, to wait for us in paradise and all that. But after an hour of talking, I just felt or sensed that he was in a little corner up, so cold and dark and frightened. And I said, Tani, my boy, what are you doing there? What is going on? Why aren't you with Jesus now? And then the Holy Spirit kept talking to my heart and I said, I know, even though you told me that you have received Jesus in your heart, you haven't really because you were not a hypocrite. That the Holy Spirit kept telling me that and I knew that he didn't want to be a hypocrite receiving him in his heart because he didn't want to leave the drugs or he couldn't leave the drugs and he knew that that was bad. So what would I do? I then just told him, Danny, it wasn't like that. Jesus died for us 2,000 years ago. It didn't depend on your good merit to have him. If you had received him, he could have helped you. So I just turned to God and said, please God, receive my words as Danny's mother. Danny, please repeat in your heart. And I said, thank you, Jesus, for having died for us. Forgive me for all the groans I made. Please receive me in your spirit, in, in your paradise, and come to my heart. At that moment, it was a strong feeling that he was not there in that corner anymore, but he was with Jesus. So we started to tell him, yes, Danny, now you are with Jesus. Now you will go to paradise. Just wait for, with him for, for the moment. You are going to paradise, mi amor, and we'll be together again. That moment changed everything because when Danny finally went, my family and I, and every person that was, were praying for him understood that it was God's plan, plan to save him. God had the victory. Light won and not the darkness. My dear boy now lives in the light and not in the darkness. 1 Corinthians 15:57 says, but thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And John 1, 5 says, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. In the next weeks, of weeks or months, God was very clear and patient with me and gave me as many times as I needed proofs and miracles that I wasn't imagining that. That was real. Before two, year, two years passed, one day when I was 
here in church listen, listening to John. He was talking about the prayer and he said, if you had an Aladdin's lap, lamp and you could ask for anything, what would you ask? Of course, my mind started going to imagining Danny again with us. But some, a voice stopped, stopped me, a voice inside me that said, would you really bring him from where he is? And I pictured him in paradise. I picture as if it was a race and he has passed that racing line and I was going to pull him back to run the race again. That was the moment when I really understood that he shouldn't come. I, was, I am going to go someday when God calls me. So in that moment, I think I closed my grieving time because, not because I don't miss him, I miss him every day, but because I have peace, I know and I accept God's will. Little by little, I learned to trust in God's promises. I fed myself in the verses that Lisa taught me to trust, and through them, I found strength, peace, or hope, or whatever I need, whatever I need. Lisa led me, and God did the rest. I learned to trust in his promises that not only give me what I need, but help me to know him each day a little more, to know who I am for him, and to know how to listen to him in my heart. My dear father was preparing me for another grieving time in my life. My marriage broke after a few months after that. I was standing on my feet again, but it was so painful. Again, I decided to, to believe God and to lean on him because I was destroyed. I felt as if I was dust. In prayer, God answered me. Two times he told me, I will reconstruct you. I will rebuild you. And I believed him. So I kept on my life. I kept with projects and working hard. And after all that, I discovered a new me. I was rebuilt better than before because I have been lost for years in being the mother of, the wife of, or whatever of. It wasn't me. And then I discovered myself. I also kept asking Jesus to come and give me his eyes in my heart to see Jeff, to really forgive him. And I did. So when I told Jeff that I had completely forgave him and that we could now be real friends, he was touched and happy. And he told me to go back again to an old project, something that we were thinking to do when Danny was still alive, that was to try and make a rehab center, but a rehab center that had God in it, not just a superior power, as they say, without God. So, Danny used to say a word whenever he talked about having a new life. I don't know where he took it from, but he said, renovatio, renovatio, a Latin word for renovation. So that was the name that we were dreaming for our center. And then, just recently, maybe two years ago, somebody introduced us to Father Gustavo Larrique in El Prado, who has a center which is called Renacer. He has a long story of obedience to God. He is a real God's person, and he had made wonders in other people's lives. So we were touched by his story, by the center, by him. So we started by helping him, sponsoring young people that were trying to rehab and didn't have the means for it. And then the father told us that uh, they were needing a new center, I mean, to reconstruct and rebuild in another, like a daily center. And that's what we did, and very recently it has been inaugurated. And it's called Renovatio. 
Centro Diurno Renovatio. And my Tani is there because I painted him and he is in one of the walls. So I know that when I don't have the answer, I can just say, it doesn't matter. I trust God. 2 Corinthians 4, 6 says, for God who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. This promise shown in Danny's heart and in my own. I was able to hear God's voice. This was the strongest teaching that I received in, in those years, learning to walk depending on God and listening to his voice. That's how I could listen and guide Tani to heaven. God guide us with his light so we can receive the presence that he wants to give us through his Holy Spirit so can, we can be light for other people. Let me finish with a verse that Jeff had given to Danny and became very real for Danny and for us. Matthew 7, 7, 8 says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. That's my story. I want to pray for Beatrice, and I just want to encourage any of you, if there's something that any of us ever share up here, up in front of everybody, that touches you, that you want a chance to talk with somebody about, please know that you can be free to do that. Oftentimes we'll share, but we don't know what you're experiencing in what we share. So Beatrice will be around a little bit after the service. Please you know, pull her aside and talk with her if you'd like to, if there's something that she shared that touched your heart. Um, I will share from experience, after we share like this, sometimes Satan really gets under our skin afterwards. And we need the encouragement of the body of Christ to know that we've connected, that God's at work, that what, the risk that we took in being vulnerable and sharing is for his glory and has glorified him. So I just want to share that with you um, for Beatrice's part, but for any of us over these weeks. Let me pray. Father, I give you glory, I give you thanks for the way that you were faithful to Beatrice through difficult years, difficult relationships, difficult emotions as she watched Danny get caught, as, as her marriage ended. But Lord, I thank you for the way that you guided her in that hospital room I thank you for the relief that Danny felt at the very end of his life, for the wisdom that his mother had to pray with him and for him, and for the, the response that, that we trust he had. Thank you for the affirmation that you have spoken into Beatrice's heart as a mother, that your love for Danny could, could overcome any gap that your love for him was deeper and bigger, even than hers or Jeff's. And I thank you for the image you gave her of the finish line and of Danny having reached the end and being with you and the invitation that one day she will be with you as well. Lord, I pray for a renovar, a re, a re, uh, renovatio. I pray for a renovatio. I pray for the priest who is ministering to those who are struggling to walk into the light. And Lord, I pray your blessing on that place, that space, Lord. Um, may those who need your intervention experience you reaching for them, and may they respond. We pray for miracles in their life, that the stronghold of drugs and addiction could be broken, and that they could know freedom in you. We pray these things for your honor and glory. Amen. <laughs>